Je n'ai rien dit, jamais promis, mais tu me dois sans le vouloir. Dans ton désespoir. Je t'implore, tu m'ignores, je n'ai que faire de ton mépris, car je l'aime aussi. Hi, hello, hello. Um, mm -hmm. hello, yeah, hi. <laughs> Um, yeah, we're gonna do a musical party. Um, because I'm not ready for most books just yet. I will continue, um, suspect, so suspect, maybe next week, or maybe just as a little extra bonus stream sometime during the week. I don't know. We'll find out. Um, but for today, ba -da -ba -da -ha. <laughs> as you may have guessed by the music, if you know the music, if I have forced you to listen to the musical music often enough to recognize the style of music for this musical. <laughs> So yeah, I haven't watched this musical in Thanks for the Outer Hosts, um, both Chris and Trey. Um, but I, fair warning, I haven't like watched, properly watched this musical in nearly a year actually. I looked at the um, date for the fan art that I drew, and it was like late April <laughs> last year. So, probably even longer because that one drawing took me a long time. <laughs> but yeah, so I did skim through it, and god, I forgot how beautiful that musical is. Like, Jesus. <laughs> Uh, but we will talk about that more. As with my um, uh, the 1789 is among the Labyrinths uh, draw to, I have made layers of all the songs. The names of the songs are on the layer. Um, there are 25 layers. <laughs> I believe. No, there are 26. I'm sorry, there are 26 layers. So I have to make 26 drawings. At least. <laughs> um, so it's a long musical. But we're just gonna start it. Um, let me find 
begin. Dang. Sorry if you guys could hear that my phone was had the music on for some reason. Um so yeah. Let's start us off always the most difficult. Um so how do we start? Well let's start with um Merlin. I have no idea what my drawing style is going to be for this intro. But let's start with Merlin. Because this is, as you may have guessed, by the title. Oh you draw a wizard. <laughs> it is um, the um, story of Arthur, or well, I think like probably multiple stories combined would be more accurate. Because, you know, it's Arthur, it's a legend, there are lots of stories. <laughs> uh. So... Um, we start I mean, I don't know a lot about artists specifically I have seen this musical and I know some things about his legends and other things I uh, I'm not so familiar with, but I hope it it's it will still make sense even if you know nothing about it. It just it isn't like a perfect like story because it's like based on legend. Um, yeah. Apparently this is going to be my style for now at least. We have a wizard. Um who I hope you're more familiar with. It's because his name is Merlin. He the Merlin. Um and we start with um a little bit of backstory of like um god what's his name uh i am not going to pronounce these things correctly by the way <laughs> like neither english nor french because i'm dutch so <laughs> um but i don't know how you pronounce it it's a pen dragon uh he was uh, King of the Britons, and not that's how we start. Um, well, we start with him being dead, he is very dead. <laughs> he was the King of the Britons, and with the Britons, we mean modern day Welsh people. Like, people who live in like what's now Wales. Those are the Britons. Uh, 
Uh, you need he kind of looks evil, but he isn't evil. He isn't evil. Don't worry about it. He is pretty decent. <laughs> I'm not gonna say anyone is good is a good person. Because they aren't. I'd be lying very hard. I don't know, probably has a beard. Does he? He has like a little beard in the musical, but you know, it's a Merlin. He needs to have like a classic classic wizard long beard. I don't know how to draw beards. But yeah, um, I would highly recommend like, um, like even if you don't want to watch it, I would highly recommend just like checking it out for costumes and like staging because like I said I skimmed through it today and god it's so beautiful <laughs> like the set design, the costume, the people, the dances, it's all just <laughs> Can you please move? Thank you so much. Yes. That's kind of what we are to do. And my only experience with drawing beards is when I have to draw um, a version of Chris, <laughs> actually. <laughs> or Rufus, or whatever. <laughs> When I have to draw a Chris drawing, <laughs> it's not accurate. I know, but he does have the long hair. He's your typical wizard guy. Like medieval wizard guy. You know the type. There we go. Um anyway. So, um where was I with explaining? Um Uther Uther I don't know how to put this. Uther Pendragon um, does. Um, hey Chris. <laughs> and um, he doesn't leave behind an heir as far as everyone knows. So Instead, you get Excalibur. Um, Excalibur is in the distance. And Excalibur is a sword. Well, I mean, fun fact, the sword in the stone is not actually Excalibur. <laughs> But it is, <laughs> in legends. <laughs> in most legends, well, not like in modern interpretation, it usually is Excalibur, but it isn't actually Excalibur originally. But for convenience sake, it's Excalibur. <laughs> there. Anyway, <laughs> so we have. 
a sword in the stone, which is Excalibur, but originally, according to old legends, it wouldn't have been. But not important. We have a sword in the stone. Who gets? Who will get the sword? Out of the stone will become the next king of the Bretons. Yes. <laughs> That's how that story goes. Um, and Merlin, um, a wizard of... Wizard? Not of anything. Well, kind of of anything. Um, but he has been tasked to look over um, who um, Uther's actual heir, who will eventually get the sword out of so. And that's Arthur. <laughs> Of Waverly. No. Um, I think in this particular musical he is a one of the... he is a being of Avalon, which is the realm of the fairies. And fairies, I mean kind of fairies, but also gods. It's the weird mix for all the supernatural creatures come from. Um, but yeah, that's the beginning. <laughs> that's a little bit of backstory. So, song two. So, we, um, flash forward in time a bit and, um, to um, a tournament. A tournament is being held near um, the uh, near Excalibur. I presume. I mean, Excalibur is at the scene, so I presume it's near Excalibur, and they aren't like two weeks away. From it. But <laughs> um, and we get. Where is Miss? <laughs> Because we now get um, the introduction of uh, Miss's favorite character, even though I don't think she has actually seen the musical. Though I'm not sure, maybe she has seen the musical by now, but she has grown fan art of him. Um, but yeah, he is one of the, um, people fighting at the tournament, um, he is called, God, I, I don't know. I'm not going to pronounce any of this correctly. I should really just accept that, but... <laughs> like, I want to pronounce it at least in a way that you guys will understand me. Because my instinct is just to pronounce it in a very Dutch way, and that's not going to be <laughs> understandable for anyone. <laughs> um, I need to... How do you even... There were some things there for someone. I didn't... But that's the basic... There are various different ways of spelling it. Um, let's make this drawing a bit in. Um, Malia again, I guess we'll go with the pronunciation. That's not a great pronunciation, but this is not going to be a great drawing of him, so you know. Listen, now, that's now. 
I have to remember what he looks like. No, he doesn't have. He has like a side. He does have like swoop, yeah. Um, but yeah, he is at the um, tournament. He fights uh, one of the other people at the tournament, and he tries to get um, the sword out of the stone. And he fails um, because um, this is not um, this is this is not his story. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, meanwhile, Arthur is, um, he has been staying with his, like, half family, <laughs> I guess, <laughs> is what you'd, is that what you'd call it? Like, I would say foster family, which is kind of true, but they're also, like, real family. Um, but yeah, he has been staying with, I believe it's like, his half-brother, cousin, something along those lines. It's family, but not, like, direct family. That's all you need to know, really. Um... And um, his cousin, is it his cousin? I have almost no idea. Uh, it's either his cousin or his half brother <laughs> is also participating at the tournament. Um, and um, Arthur, being a very smart person is um, in charge of like his brother's like knightly stuff like his armor and sword and shield and stuff um, but he forgets um, very smartly his I'm gonna say brothers I don't know if that's correct but you know what we'll live with it um, he forgets his brother's uh, like sword has a shield, has his arm, and forgets the sword. Kind of important. Um, so, um, uh, Arthur uh, first tries to like steal a sword from a like. Um, blacksmith who happens to be at the scene um, but he gets caught not by the blacksmith miraculously enough um, but by um, uh, but by Merlin Merlin is there doing magic stuff <laughs> no he was he like said he um was there to watch over arthur make sure he would get uh to excalibur and that nobody else would get it
Um, and Merlin is like, you know what? It's not like great um, that you steal a sword, but um, I know a uh, free sword. Um, you should try to get the um, to get the sword out of the stone because you shouldn't steal. But that sword doesn't belong to anyone. So, and Arthur is like, what? <laughs> No, I can't do that. The sword out of stone. That, that's what they're all fighting for. I can't take that. And also, why would it come out for me? <laughs> I'm a nobody. Merlin is like, well, you should try it anyways. Um, so he does, <laughs> and somehow, um, surprise, surprise, uh, the sword comes out of the stone. What? <laughs> didn't expect that, that the story would end here. <laughs> That's like, let's make that blade a little. Um, so, um, Arthur takes the sword of stone and everyone is like, what? <laughs> Who are you? How did you get the sword out of the stone? Um, and then Merlin, uh, reveals that Arthur is, um, in fact, um, God of God his name again. What's the space? Uther, Uther's um, son. Um, Uther's um, like bastard son to be more more accurate um and um everyone is like oh okay what <laughs> that doesn't make sense um, let's give this man some clothes. I don't know exactly. He's like wearing a kind of like a vest, but also like. That pose doesn't make any sense. What happened to your legs? Um, but, so, most people are, like, confused, but also, like, I guess we have a king now? Um, but not good old, um, Maliagant, however you want to pronounce his name. Um, he is just like, why would I listen to this guy? He, 
he isn't even a knight, he um, doesn't know anything about being king or being a lord or being a knight or so why would I listen to him? He's not even a full like son. Um I know what clothes do in this time period. Um, which is pretty understandable if you ask me, but you know. Um, his real costume is so much more impressive. This isn't even close. Again, if you want to take a look at these costumes, because they're amazing and you really should, just do it. <laughs> like, take a look at these costumes. This is not what this looks like. This is like half of Arthur's, like, one of Arthur's future outfits. But you know what? We'll roll with it. And a little bit. Um, so yeah, he is just like not having it. And that's where this song comes in. <laughs> um, let me find it in the list. Um, it's a good song. I like it a lot. Where basically he declares war on Arthur. Because he doesn't accept Arthur as his king. Which, again, fair enough. But you know what? He is calling. Hey Oops. Welcome to me explaining the plot of the musical very badly. This is the drawing I have made. <laughs> I have made two drawings. Look. We started with this which I made before the stream. Um and then I made this. Um and now I have made this. <laughs> um. So yeah, we. Let's not rotate the canvas. Thank you very much. Anyway, we just got to the part where um, this guy named Maliagant, which is my best approximation of how to pronounce this name. Um, he is Miss's favorite character, if that um, gives you any clue as to who I'm talking about. <laughs> Who's... yeah! <laughs> um, let me write... It's spelled something like that. And he has just declared Arthur, um, he has just declared war to Arthur. 
who is but a boy <laughs> and is not fit to be king of um, the Britons who again are Welsh people like modern day Welsh people they live in <laughs> what's now Wales <laughs> Nah, let's keep it at this. I was going to do more for this drawing, but... Um, because... Um... I believe the song is called something like the fires of war or something, so we're just gonna have some good old fire in the background, which I'm not... It's just gonna be this. <laughs> I know how to draw fire, don't worry about it. So yeah, that's happening. Um, let's get to the next one. Why not? So we have Arthur. Let's draw Arthur for the first time. <laughs> Who am I? I think you're Oobs. <laughs> oh, like that. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, and you know what? This is the perfect time for a um, the use of a patented. Uh, crispy shrug. Because he has no idea what's going on. <laughs> That's what this song is about. <laughs> he just... Hmm. He just wants to get a sword for his, I don't know, brother. And um, now he is king, apparently. And he just doesn't know what to do with that thing what Um, but yeah. So Arthur is just like, I don't know what to do with this. Like, I'm king now. I don't know how to be a king. I'm not even a knight. I haven't been knighted. And because I'm the king, um, now there is no one of high enough power to knight me. So I can't really become a knight. Which honestly is a big oversight, so I don't know really know what to do now. <laughs> um, I am but a boy and I don't know what to do. <laughs> Please help. <laughs> Um, but 
He has a crown. He doesn't actually have a crown anymore. I don't think he has. If I, he does, I can't remember if he... Because he doesn't wear it. <laughs> but for the sake of convenience, we'll give him a crown for now. have any clue of what's going on. Um, Merlin is just like, I will help you and then doesn't really give any practical advice for anything like that for the last musical. So, you know. Very useful. Just have him play. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh no that's no it's not like um merlin uses him for power um because merlin doesn't really need it He's fine, don't worry about it. <laughs> don't worry about it, thing, he's fine. <laughs> um, his hair is going to be difficult to depict because it's like swooped back and it's. Uh, sides of his face, side, like he has a side shape, um, <laughs> it's fine, <laughs> he totally knows what to do, don't worry about it. It's not like he was just a farm boy a couple of days ago, he knows how to run the kingdom. Um, but, yeah, um, so Merlin says that he will be there to help him and also will, like, Avalon, which again, Realm of Fairies, um, the fairies are on his side and they will guide him, but the fairies aren't really, like, and they're a bit cryptic in, like, all their stuff, so... <laughs> I mean, yep. <laughs> Listen, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and say that Arthur in this isn't like a very like active protagonist as you would usually expect. He is a protagonist in like. Uh, in the sense of actual, like, tales in which things are, happen to him. <laughs> and he just has to deal with it. <laughs> I 
Nobody is really on his side. He has like a side thing. Every I'm going to repeat this as often as I can until every single one of you um, look at the music. Like not like, you don't have to watch it or anything, but just Google like look at it on YouTube, skim through it. You don't have to watch bits and pieces. But just look at the aesthetic and see how good it is and how much effort they put into like everything. He is fine. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, um, yeah. I probably should uh, draw this. They aren't extremely important, but I don't just feel like Arthur just standing there with a good enough image. So, um,. These are pretty much by his side for the entire musical. Um, they are creatures, creatures of Avalon. Um, the wolf and the stag of Avalon. So basically, which is very interesting. Um, like the way they por portrayed that. Because um, they're both portrayed by people, of course. It's musical. No animals on stage. Um, so the guy who. Um, I am going to portray them as um, animals here. Now I have to figure out how to draw a wolf, which I definitely know. Don't worry. Um, the guy who portrays the wolf is on pretty much all fours the entire musical. Like, there are very few instances in which he isn't, like, crawling around on all fours. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> so, he, like, he and the stag, the person who plays the stag, are uh, pretty much, like, dancing the entire musical hmm? like around Arthur not how wolves those work but you know what sure um and um not a fun fact is that the um, dancer who plays the stag of Avalon. How do you draw a stag? What do stags look like? I have honestly. They're like horses, right? <laughs> Shorter. Yep. Um, I'm pretty sure I just drew a llama. <laughs> They have like the things. Mm. 
but the uh, actor who plays the stag um, is a person who misses a leg. So he dances on crutches. Crutches? Is that the word? Like the things you use to walk around? Which is just really cool. <laughs> That's my point. This is what stack looks like, right? Maybe short, short neck. Like. So basically you have Arthur, basically the entire musical, who is surrounded by um, two guys who are dancing around, one of them who dances around with only one leg and uses crutches. Cr crutches doesn't sound right, but that is the word, right? <laughs> And the other guy who just runs around on all fours and dances that way. It's just really interesting. So yeah, that's just really cool, I think. Other fun fact, the guy on crutches also dances around in another musical I've seen. Uh, the one about Dracula. That's my best attempt at a stag. I don't know, shit. I haven't actually let you hear the song. Well, musical, this this is la. <laughs> there we go. Now we get Legend of the Roi Arthur. The Legend of King Arthur. For dummies. <laughs> because my explanation is not great. Can you even hear this song? So quiet. Hey, Lewis! <laughs> is this the good art stream? No, I don't... I think you're mistaken. This is not the good art stream. This is a mediocre art stream with a bad explanation. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Thank you for coming. Now I have an excuse to rest my hand for a bit and go through the thing again. The shark is just very kind. Um, but yeah. We are doing The Legend of King Arthur, a French musical, which is why it's written in French, and I'm not going to attempt to pronounce it again. <laughs> Let's 
Um, so we started with a little product of Merlin um, getting told by Uther Pendragon. I think that's his name. Um, Magic Merlin, yes indeed. Um, Uther died, um, but he told Merlin to watch over his son, bastard son, um, Arthur. Um, meanwhile, the sword and the stone is there for the um, who will decide the next king of the Britons. Um, So that that then we got to the tournament. At the tournament, Arthur got the sword out of the stone, um, and most people accepted him with a bit of like, sure, whatever, um, but not 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 this guy, um, Melly again. I don't know how to pronounce it. Don't make me pronounce it again. Yeah, the sword in the stone, which. Is or is not Excalibur. <laughs> um, he is angry. He declares war on Arthur because he is not going to bow to a bastard son who, who, sorry, forgot to turn it down. Thank you very much. Uh, he is not going to bow down to a bastard son who, um, just questionable leadership, isn't even a knight, etc, etc. So he declares war. And that's when we got to the last song we drew. Um, <laughs> with a King Arthur who is very unsure of what to do because he's he has been crowned king but like I said, he isn't even in the night. He doesn't know what to do. He was a normal person just two days ago. And now he's constantly being followed around by a wolf and a stag of the fairy world. So, you know. <laughs> and that's all I grew in the past hour. <laughs> What's talking? <laughs> Not used to talking so much. Doesn't help that my allergies are making my throat feel all sunny. Uh, anyway. Yes. So then... I'm gonna have to draw a sword fight. Uh. <laughs> I'm gonna have to draw a simplified version of my my old piece of fan art right here <laughs> because that's basically what's happening. <laughs> um, Arthur gets um, like Arthur's like um, thinking gets interrupted. Um, by um, someone coming in and saying uh, one of our allies um, is being attacked by um, Mali again <coughs> and his daughter is um, is still there his daughter is in the castle and is possibly in danger and he is asking for a help against Mali again.
That hair is way too tall. Let me lower your hair a bit, good sir. Um, so Arthur and his um, knights go to the castle and um, they uh, fight Mali against um, Mali against um, people or maybe people more like you um, I don't really know what to call them. Uh, knights, fighters, is you know, <laughs> you get the. Hooligans, sure. <laughs> They're not good, like. <laughs> As you expect. Um, but they're very strong. It is not a fight that's won easy. You will get a body. <laughs> There's only so far as I can draw, Lewis. <laughs> Especially, there's only so far as I can draw someone in a sword fight. I don't know how people stand when they sword fight. I will eventually give him hands. Music kids. <laughs> well, I mean, you are also um, because most of the like leads in this musical are also like French, um, like musicians. <laughs> So technically, you're correct. I guess. <laughs>
And is this how you hold a sword? Probably not. Ooh, really bad form, probably. But you know what? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Regular sword. How familiar are you with the Miss Lewis? <laughs> Just curious. <laughs> Pretty familiar? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm not super familiar. I mean, I know some things, but... But I'm not, like, super familiar. I mean, I can imagine if Arthur being like a Welsh, like, uh, mythical figure, I suppose. <laughs> mythical hero. But yeah, that means you can call me out if I ha if there is anything that's wrong. <laughs> Though I suppose you would more be calling out the musical than me. Unless I remember it though. <laughs> Welcome to This is not how you hold a sword part 2 Or this is also not how you hold a sword <laughs> Hold a sword but it is now. 
Um, but yeah, during this zone, I should probably put it on for a sec. Um, it's not really, it doesn't have any lyrics, it's an instrumental. Well, there is a lot of fighting and mostly dancing happening. They're also fighting. Um, they, this, yeah. I like the musical, the uh, music in this musical. It's very fun. Most of it, at least. Um, this is a bad approximation of what happens. <laughs> mm. So, um, Arthur goes to the castle that is being attacked with his men. Um, he fights Melly against I. What? Oh, Witcher. Yeah, I read it and I was like, ha. Huh. Well, I wasn't really. <laughs> I wasn't like, ha, huh, but you would have heard that, but. <laughs> I read it. And I see you. <laughs> Puns are allowed in this. Uh, but, yes. Um, so, um. Um, but then the- I was like, ha, yes, <laughs> that's all you're getting. <laughs> um, so to get to the castle, uh, the five million men, um, but it's a hard battle and they don't really win, if I remember correctly. 
like they're very close to losing or something along those lines. It was not going well. Um, so a truce is called momentarily. Um, and Melio Gown is like, you don't want anyone else to die. Um, I want the throne. Let's fight. <laughs> um, and Arthur is, um, Arthur is already wounded at this point. And everyone advises him to like, not fight Melee again because number one he's wounded and number two Melee thinks he's a better fighter just in general. Um, but Arthur uh, agrees and they fight and I believe that eventually, like, uh, Arthur loses, pretty much, and, um, but they stop, uh, Mali again from, uh, killing him. Um, so Mali again is like, uh, I th it's a very confusing, like, scene, but my closest approximation, like, even if you have the, like, translation, I didn't fully understand what was going on, but that's probably because this is an interpretation of, like, a legend, <laughs> so it's a bit, like, confusing in that um, medieval, like, early medieval honor, honorly, like, sense. So, um, you um not me because if you're the king is it back hello 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 am i back <laughs> Hi! Okay, I'm back. Um, what was the last thing you heard me say? <laughs> I don't- it seems like OBS gave up on me for a moment. Which is very rude. Two minutes. Yeah, I don't know what I said in those two minutes, really. Was a yawn. <laughs> what was the last thing I said? <laughs> I'm all fucking flustered now. Wait, what happened?
Ugh. I don't know what the last thing is I said. <laughs> um, I was talking about. What did I say? Um, well, I caught on because OBS gave me a notification that everything, like, that it wasn't working probably, that disconnected and but everything seemed fine and then everything was not fine <laughs> and I don't know what happened in the meanwhile <laughs> and then OBS reconnected again and I don't know whether it's for longer than I think or <laughs> so I don't know what the last thing is you guys heard me say <laughs> or what I was explaining Not long, okay. That's good. Um, okay, so let's just say um, they fight. <laughs> let's just say that. Um, they fight. Mally again wins. Arthur is wounded. Um, Arthur is like. You want to carry Excalibur and become king, that's okay. Just knight me. Promise me that you will knight me. Um, because that's an issue you have with me. Uh, you want, you can carry Excalibur. And... Um, I want, I need to be knighted and no one can and will knight me because no one will hold Excalibur but you will so just will you please knight me so Malagan takes uh, Excalibur and says sure and he knights Arthur I honestly couldn't tell you why it's probably a weird early medieval honor thing if not. Uh. <laughs> uh. I'm glad you would have gone through all the trouble to message me to send me a panicky message on discord <laughs> so yeah um but i i don't really know why but um Mali again, even though he pretty much won the fight, after he knights Arthur, he is like, this is, I think it's probably because this is not the victory he wants or something, or whatever, I don't know, um, but he is like, he throws Excalibur on the ground. And leaves because um, I don't know. <laughs> he leaves. He promises he will come back. He will um, marry 
the uh, daughter of the um, like Lord's castle that this all is taking place in. Um, because that's the thing. Um, but yeah, he will come back. Listen, people may have died, but um, who knows, really? <laughs> like I said, it's confusing in that you don't really get why, because it seems like he has won, but I don't know, maybe there's like some kind of weird mental slash honor battle that's going on that you don't really know about, but um, that would have made sense in like early medieval times, but doesn't really do make sense now. Um, but he said, uh, like, this is. No, the thing about marrying the daughter of the castle, um, which, by the way, is Guinevere, um, he says that he will marry her. Arthur is like, yeah, sure, whatever. Um, if that will, um, like, um, stop you from wanting to be king, that's fine. But then that doesn't happen. So I think that's it. I think that's it. Like he wins. And he knights Arthur. But then he's like okay. Um, one of my um, things I was angry about is now gone. Um, so maybe you can be king. But then Arthur promises him that he can marry Guinevere, but spoiler for the next two songs, Arthur ends up falling in love with Guinevere and marrying her. I think that's it. Maybe. Or he just gets refused outright that he d can't marry Guinevere. I... something along those lines. Point being, he ends up leaving mad, and he promises that he will come back and take the throne and take Guinevere. That's his promise, <laughs> I think. I mean, like, honor was a really big thing. Not even for important people, just for everyone in general. We talked about it a lot in class. <laughs> honor, like, you shouldn't underestimate the importance of honor in early medieval society. Because that's basically what every single story is based on. Or has a connection to. Like there are lots of like um, early medieval like romantic stories. But even those can be like connected to honor because they are usually like the um, main guy has to go uh, do something or he gets um, a destiny placed upon him that he will marry this person. 
And if he doesn't end up doing that, that will break it, the code of honor and... <laughs> Honor is stupid in some cases, but it's also very useful in some cases. Because, like, it is a. Sometimes it's just really stupid, but sometimes it's also just um, that uh, you can, like, just. Honor was so much ingrained into that society that even as a king or a queen or something like that, if you broke a code of honor, you were done. <laughs> like, if you did something that was in any way illegal that would break your code of honor if you were not nice to the people or to a guest that would have broken your honor if you'd done something that was against like um if you broke your promise if like all those things I think in a society where like a very like uh, divided law system and police doesn't exist the fact that people no matter who or what can call each other out on honor like things of honor that are generally agreed upon and if it like measures up to that that someone can just like, <laughs> say to the king, you have broken your code of honor, that's not okay, you can't do that. And the king has to be, has to make up for it. <laughs> um, but yeah. <laughs> Anyway, that was my passionate rant of the day. <laughs> my voice is just... <laughs> it's going to be gone by the end of the stream. Impossible. Um, there we go. Um, so Arthur, um, well, Mally again leaves, but Arthur is wounded. He was already wounded during the battle and now he straight up like passes out because of his wounds. <laughs> I mean, yeah, pretty much. That's like someone could just call the king out for like messing up, doing something that's not honorable. And the king literally would have to pay an honor price. He would have to pay back to society or to whoever he like did wrong to that he that he brought dishonor to himself and he would have to pay back his honor price and because he's the king that honor price is incredibly high. <laughs>
Yeah. Every one in like medieval society had an honor prize. Uh, well, every free person. Let's say that. <laughs> um, and that, like, honor prize depended on how high, like, how high you stood in society. Which is fair. <laughs> No, but that's one of the things, and that's one of the reasons why sometimes I can get a little um, um, passionate about medieval times, is that there are a lot of misconceptions about medieval times. Like, a lot. And guess what? Most of those misconceptions are... Um, there because of um, mostly um, Enlightenment era people and also Renaissance. Enlightenment more but Renaissance as well. Who um, made up a lot of like th things about the Middle Ages. Like, for example, the most common misconception about the Middle Ages. The middle, people in the Middle Ages were generally very clean. <laughs> like, they... Like, Guinevere. Very fa she is very fancy. He has like, ooh, let's not do that. Like, very elaborate. Her outfits in this musical are like amazing. <laughs> Costumes in this musical are amazing. I'm gonna tell you how many times you need to hear it before you actually go. <laughs> Yes, the whole people I've met on my face is thing. Mean, it's so wrong. <laughs> people in the Middle Ages were very clean. Um, they bathed it. They kept their city clean. Cities clean. Um, and just. They had, like, there were even penalties to, like, which you would have to pay if you weren't clean. Or if you brought unclean things into the city that might attract, like, um, vermin and such. Um, like, they, it's such a common misconception. It's insane. <laughs> um, but also, like, the whole um, they had, like, generally speaking, it's 
would speak of like having a good like character personality if you were a clean person because um being filthy was considered sinful like that's the most logical explanation i have heard during one of my medieval classes and i was just like this makes so much sense so why do people still believe in this myth <laughs> but yeah it was considered pretty much sinful to be um filthy <laughs> if you loitered or if you were in um, uh, if you were filthy or anything of the sort that would impact na negatively on your um, on how people saw you and again on your honor <laughs> so yeah, people kept themselves clean But yeah. Oh, that's that's a good point to like bring up because, of course, everything like technology has advanced. So, don't hold people of medieval times to our standards. <laughs> Don't hold any historical people to our standards. Really, but you know. Medieval people get a bad rap, so. Have to stand up for them. They can do it anymore, and they're dead. <laughs> 
so yeah, we have the introduction of um, Guinevere. Who, um, is pretty much like, I believe this song, not this one that's playing right now, but the one which is pretty much her introduction song, is about her, like, um, not wanting to, um, Think not really not wanting to get married but more like choosing who she gets to marry her dress is a lot better than this <laughs> um Because again, while everyone would like, um, fighting and such, she, um, what, well, like, uh, Mali again, like, vowed to marry her, and if she, like, wouldn't marry him, um, He'd start a war and such and whatever and whatever. The whole spiel. Um, and she was just like, no thanks. <laughs> I want to get married to someone who I love. Thank you very much. I don't know what it means. No push, no. I mean, Mali again leaves, so she doesn't end up marrying him, but you know, it's the whole um, idea of it just doesn't sit well with her. So anyway, <laughs> that's pretty much her introduction. Uh, maybe doesn't threaten. I mean, he doesn't really threaten to kill hundreds of people. He is more like, give me the crown, <laughs> give me the throne, because, I, like he, it's fair to say that he won the actual like tournament at the beginning which was held to decide who would become king and he won the tournament and he maybe couldn't get the sword out of the stone but he did like actually win and people were about to make him king but the and the only reason he didn't become king is because Arthur could get the sword out of the stone. And he's a bit bitter that everyone was just like, yeah, that's fine. Even though Arthur is like a boy. <laughs> I mean, he's played by an actual man in the musical, but like, generally speaking, he was pretty much, like, a page boy to his, like, half-brother or whatever. And didn't know anything. So, 
so you know, not the actual best candidate for king. <laughs> but you know, that's just my humble opinion, but you know. Uh, let's see. Um, but yeah, Arthur gets brought to Guinevere and her like handmaidens and such because he's wounded and he can't go back to Camelot um, for a while because of that. Um, so Guinevere and her like and maidens and such will take care of him in the meanwhile while he's recovering. Um, I don't know if I can do this drawing and that will call the day. Yes, romantic, very romantic. <laughs> It's totally not the setup for their romance or anything. Let's give him a whole buttload of pillows to lie in. <laughs> some semblance of clothes on. <laughs> Draw me like one of French. I mean, fair enough. <laughs> it is a French musical. <laughs> <laughs> so 
if you keep an anecdote. <laughs> I was waiting for it. <laughs> I can take back the clothes. That's fine. There you go. Half mixed, I guess. <laughs> Only for you. I should probably say things. <laughs> shirtless um this the first save again uh 
What do you mean first save? Hmm? What is happening? Drawings? What do you mean? What? <laughs> I'm confused. <laughs> I see. Oh. Did I say say? Oh. <laughs> I meant speak. I don't know why save came out. <laughs> no, I have saved. I, w I mean, thank you for the reminder, but <laughs> I did save. <laughs> it's not the first save, don't worry. I mean, it might just- sometimes I say things and I'm just like, what? <laughs> I mean, if you both heard save, then, um, I probably said save, which I didn't mean to. <laughs> Anyway, I meant speak, talk. <laughs> you need to move down a bit. So this actually makes sense. Let's make you actually look at him. There we go. So yeah, we... As Christy said, we have a, um, a bit of a romantic situation on our hands. Um, um, which definitely doesn't lead to um, them proclaim proclaiming their love towards each other. Um, he stays there for a few months, I believe. It's fine. They fall in love. Um, let's get, um, blah, blah, blah. let me get music, uh, so I can, this song, um, because that's not the entire story. Um, so Arthur is wounded and Guinevere takes care of him. And 
um, when he wakes up, he sees her and um, he falls in love with her and she also falls in love with him. Um, which is totally normal. And Arthur stays there for a few months. Um, and they get to know each other more and um, they want to get married. Arthur wants to marry Gwyneth, but Merlin, remember him, um, doesn't think it's a good idea if they were to marry. Because, uh, according to Avalon, the creatures of Avalon, um, she is not the right person for him. They are not meant to be in that sense. So, um, Merlin, who um, wants to spare Arthur from heartbreak, advises him not to marry her, Guinevere. And Arthur is like confused, mostly, but then he's also like, but we kind of like we know each other now and we fell in love together. And I really, I'm just really in love with Guinevere. She is beautiful, she is very kind, she has taken such good care of me, she would make a perfect wife and queen and he, he like he is super in love with her. <laughs> like just keep remembering that uh, if and when we um, continue this, Arthur is crazy in love with Gwyneth. He he loves, loves her with his whole heart and would do anything for her. <laughs> um, but, um, so he's a bit confused and doesn't really know what to do. But eventually Merlin is just like, well, um, I gave you my advice. But if you don't want to follow it, then don't see what happens. I warned you. Um, that's all I'm gonna give you. So Arthur being very... he has a big, big crush. He has such a big crush, you have no idea. So Arthur being big smart than he is, he thinks, well, I love Guinevere, um, she loves me, I generally don't see what's, what can possibly go wrong with this, um, so like, I don't know what Avalon, what Avalon is planning, it's not like they are ever give any concrete advice. So, you know what? I am going to marry Guinevere. <laughs> and so, um, he asks her to come to um, Camelot so uh, they can be they can be married. And 
so she can become his queen. And that's where we'll leave it for today. <laughs> this is totally not going to go horribly wrong. <laughs> Cliffhanger. It's going to be a lot of cliffhangers. We're in part, we're drawing 6 out of 26. <laughs> this is going to take a while. <laughs> no, he has no reason to believe this will go wrong. He did get a warning from Merlin that um, she is not the girl for him. But that's all Merlin said of him. That she was that they were not meant to be together. Yeah, true. But basically all Arthur knows is that according to Avalon, they're not meant to fall in love. But they're clearly in love. So presumably uh, it's all going to be fine because they fell in love even though they were not meant to. Um, didn't the evil guy say he wanted to marry us? Um, yeah, don't worry about it. That's not going to come back later. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Uh, trust me, a lot is going to happen before that. <laughs> but... Mm. I mean, maybe, but not as big a reason as you might think. There is a very big other reason, but we will get into that later. And no one tell Christy in a meal. <laughs> Don't worry, Christy. It's all fine. The bad guy is gone. He's totally not going to come back. They're in love. Nothing is going to happen. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, um, let's go to this clip. That was part one of my guide to the legend of King Arthur for dummies. Um, I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope something sparked your interest about this. <laughs> I hope it was fun at the very least. <laughs> Don't worry about it, even though it's only part one. <laughs> yeah, exactly, it's fine. It's only drawing six out of twenty-six. It's not like a lot of plot is going to happen. <laughs> um but yeah. Um even if you don't do it now because you want to remain innocent or whatever. I highly, and I will say this for the, I don't know, the fifth time this stream or so, I highly recommend you at least skim, if not completely, like, if you don't want to watch it completely, that's fine, because it doesn't have translations on YouTube, so you would have to rig it all and such and such but I would advise you to at least skim through it and just look at how gorgeous the costuming the dancing and the like stages because it, I did that 
today and I forgot and I was just again blown away by how beautiful this musical is. <laughs> so I will gush about it for the rest of eternity now. <laughs> the costumes pretty much get better and better throughout the whole musical. The leads change costume a couple of times to show the passing of time. It's wonderful. <laughs> There is a lot going in this musical and I highly recommend it. Also the mu music is absolutely fantastic. <laughs> uh, cheapest art is my pen. Yeah, fair enough. The, to be fair, the um, person who plays Arthur in the musical is... Um, Pretty much my favorite French actor. I don't know a lot, but <laughs> I love him a lot. He also plays uh, Antonio Salieri in the musical about Mozart. And I just enjoy his like singing and his acting a lot. Um, and... Um, I tell you what, I will link some uh, songs from Mozart Lopra Rock uh, that he sings. So you won't be spoiled for this musical, but you will have an idea of what he looks like and um, like his singing. <laughs> Um, another fun fact is that the lady, also because I will take any excuse to link his songs from Mozart Love for a Rock in the chat. It's been in there at least seven times <laughs> since I watched that musical, probably more. <laughs> um, but also another fun fact is that the lady who plays Guinevere is in the musical 1789 The Sunday Night She is the Olympe, the lead lady. She is very beautiful. <laughs> but anyway, I will link all sorts of stuff in Discord after the stream is done, so don't worry about that. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm gonna head off now. Thank you all for listening. I hope you all enjoyed this. Love y'all. And goodbye.